Good morning, Blue Demons. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to our morning edition of Get to Know DePaul. Uh, today I'm joined by Amy Montreur to talk about DePaul's scholarship tool. Uh, before we get started, as you can for all of our broadcasts, you have the opportunity to check in to win one of our Lincoln Park Map stainless steel water bottles. So uh, it's both great to keep your drink cold and to help you get around campus. So I'd encourage you to scan the QR code pictured here or click the comments or click the link in the comments box uh, so that you you can get checked in for that chance to win. You can check in either now live as you're watching the stream or anytime uh, with the recorded video anytime before September 11th for your chance to win. But we will go ahead and get started. Amy, thanks so much for joining us today. Happy to. Hi, everybody. Yeah. So, you know, as we get started here, Amy, how about you start off by telling us a little bit about you? So who you are, how long you've been at DePaul, and why you decided to come work here in the first place? Sure. Great questions. Um, you know, this is a wonderful answer for me because I had the pleasure of being um, a new student at DePaul just like you all 25 years ago. Um, and I enjoyed DePaul so much apparently that they've just hooked me and this is my 20th year as a professional here at DePaul. So um, DePaul, as you can see, is a really great community of people, of students, of staff, um, support. And um, I have a uh, been really fortunate to be able to obtain three degrees from DePaul, which is wonderful, and, and to continue my work on in right now in our financial aid office as the director of scholarships. Um, and that includes things like awards and scholarships and anything you know that you might get, grants, things like that. So our team works really hard to make sure that we make this as affordable as possible to you all and, and get all the word out there to you. That's great. Well, and I know that a huge percentage of our students receive some sort of financial aid to attend DePaul. So there's lots of engagement, I think, by probably nearly all of our students in terms of interaction with your office. Right. That's very true. Um, yes, we have um, over 85 percent of our students generally um, apply for and receive some sort of aid at DePaul, be it a grant, a scholarship, a loan. Um, there's all kinds of things out there. There's other things that we kind of call just awards that are things that contribute to making your, um, you know, bill at DePaul more affordable. Um, so yeah, I've had the pleasure of working within financial aid in some capacity for for those 20 years, and and that's that's what we're here for to help you get through financially and and make it possible. Yeah. So I have a feeling some of our viewers are probably intrigued by the title of DePaul Scholarship Tool. So I'm wondering if you can walk us through a little bit about what, what the tool is and how students can take advantage of it. I would love to, Courtney. I'm going to pop into um, a PowerPoint now because I put that together for you and, and has some pertinent information that I'm hoping people can um, you know, keep track of as we go. And um, I think it'll be really helpful. If there's questions, I'm certainly happy to take those two after, but we'll get started on that so I can let you know all about um, how our tool works. Uh, so the first thing and most important thing is, is that I want everybody to know that you'll hear this a lot. Um, our, our tool is is on an outside website and it's called Scholarship Connect. So much like... Uh, hey, Amy, Amy, yeah. before you go any further, is there um, any way you can uh, have your presentation go full screen? Right now we're still seeing um, your, the PowerPoint. You know it should be full screen. It is on my side. Okay. Um, sorry. No, I, you're I, fine. Is I it's it's full screen on my end. Hmm. So let's try again um, okay. and see if anything happens. Did that change anything? No, it, we're still only seeing the uh, like the in PowerPoint version of it. Weird. Okay. Let's try to figure this out. Um, let me see if this does anything. I am in the slideshow here. Sorry, everybody. We know how this world is right now, getting used to new new teams. Okay, so I am in full screen on my side. Yeah, we're still seeing the in PowerPoint version. Um, um, do you do, have you had this happen before, Courtney? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, but that's me. okay. Uh, okay. If you if you want to try and shoot it over to me in an email, I can also pull it up on uh, my screen maybe and have it go full screen. Okay, let's see. I'm going to do that very, very quickly. I have okay. it here with me so that that will be to you in just a minute. Um, just want to make sure that you all get the information you need, which is most important. Okay, that should be to, on your way to you. Courtney. Great. Well, Amy, while we're waiting for this to get set up, what's your favorite place to eat in Lincoln Park since you've been oh, here for gosh. so long? 
Oh, gosh. Well, listen, you can't beat Broncos across the street. Um, that was always a big hangout when we were there. It has one of the best um, chicken sandwiches if you like gyros. Um, if you like um, just kind of when you need that greasy food day, it's it's an awesome place to go. And it's been it's kind of an institution of DePaul's. There's been a lot of ins and outs of the other restaurants at um in the Lincoln Park area, other than kind of those staple bars too, but I really do love Bronco, so everybody should try that out. Yeah, that's a great, great place. Well, great, we've got the presentation up on the screen. Perfect, thanks, Courtney. I appreciate yeah. everybody being patient with us on that. Okay, so what is DePaul Scholarship Connect? Um, so there is a link within Campus Connect where you can get to it. It is an external site that we host um, because it has all kinds of applications available to you, but it's a versatile management tool um, that allows you as the DePaul University students to apply for donor funded and university funded scholarships. Um, later in time, graduate assistantships and things as you go to graduate school, but essentially education related funds um, of any sort. So um, it's, it's pretty much where you go to find um, any other additional support you can get through scholarship or merit based awards. Um, so the important part, and I think uh, Courtney's been really great to have this all um, kind of on your ticker, but the most important part that you can leave with today is where you go to get that. Um, at DePaul.AcademicWorks.com, you are able to, whether you sign in or not, um, you are able to search both internal and external scholarships. Um, and you just use your Campus, Campus Connect credentials to sign in, so you don't have to do have anything different to create a login or anything like that. It will recognize you as a student as soon as you do that. And it will prompt you to fill out what we call a general application. And that general application is something we ask students to fill out every year. Um, the reason is we wanna update your information and we also most importantly wanna obtain your consent to use your student record information to match you to scholarships. Um, so that's the purpose of filling out that every year. We gather things like your GPA and your major, um, the type of student that you are. Um, we ask you to answer a few questions in the general application that give us information about some of your interests. Um, and we use that information to match you to scholarships we've set up in the system um, that have a certain set of criteria. Um, we're then able to either do one of two things, either match you automatically to a scholarship, which is pretty cool. You all don't have to do anything in that circumstance. We would just know that you match based on a set of qualifications. Um, and then the administrators in that area would review everybody who matched and select their students to have that scholarship. And then there's other types of scholarships where you actually have to do an application process. And that would also be recommended to you. It would essentially say that you've met a certain set of criteria, but that there's more they're asking, like an essay or to upload a video or something of that sort. Um, and you'd be able to fill that out and submit that application. Um, so that general application piece is basically just to get so, uh, more information from you that we don't have in the database that's, that may be used to match you, like what type of high school you went to or um, your heritage in some cases might be applicable. Um, and then again, to obtain your consent to match you to scholarships based on that set of criteria. So we do ask that you do that every year. Um, so this is your opportunity now to jump in there anytime soon um, to go ahead and fill out that general application and get it started. But essentially throughout the year, this is a process and I'm gonna explain to you how that works in terms of how, when, where, why you can apply for scholarships. Um, so how can I apply and search for scholarships? So once you visit and fill out the general application, the system recommends those opportunities as I was mentioning. mentioning. If you have more to do, it will prompt you to do more. You'll actually have a dashboard that will come up that you'd manage where if you've started an application, it will have you in a drafted status. It'll remind you to fill that out. It'll kind of be pushing you, sending emails when you're getting close to a deadline. Um, but you can also use, once you get in there, you can use that to search um, for scholarships with keywords. Um, and what, one thing I want to explain is, is that there's two kind of portals within here. One is a portal for the scholarships that we offer at DePaul, and another portal is for external scholarships. I'm sure that many of you have heard about um, organizations, maybe even your parents, where your parents work, or community organizations, um, or corporations. Um, a lot of those um, uh, types of places have what we call external scholarships. So it means they fund the scholarship and they often are looking for students at any college or university and will target 
uh, by sending information to us about opportunities available at, um, with their organization. So um, what we've done is we vet all of those um, and essentially we give you kind of a summary of what the scholarship is for. We have keywords in there for um, if the scholarship is to support women in science, for example, um, you could search something like women in science and that would come up. And then essentially what we do is we link you to that application piece on generally that organization site so that you can follow up and fill out their application. So there's a lot of really good ways and good resources in here for you to look for scholarships both through um, the university and outside of the university with partners that have given us um, some of that information so that you know it's vetted and it's accurate. Um, what is the best time to apply? So um, as I mentioned, every year on July 1st, we kind of start over for the new academic year and we encourage everybody anytime after July 1st to fill out their general application. But what's important here is, is that we have what we call kind of a scholarship season, which has just gone underway. Um, and what areas are attempting to do is to um, have about a month long time uh, where they open the scholarship application process and it gives you all about that month to jump in and to review applications or to fill out questions um, in applications so that you can apply yourself to scholarships available in those areas. Um, so many of our college offices are what I'm referring to. So depending on what college your major is hosted in is really important. Um, you can also search by those majors too, so you can find those things, but um, your college offices and our DePaul Central social, social media are great to keep up with as well, uh, because we will generally be posting the dates that these scholarships are available. Um, and they always have an email address to offer any um, assistance on questions students may have about their scholarships. What I'm going to pull up next is uh, the list of those scholarships that are upcoming. So as I mentioned, it is scholarship season. So um, these are colleges and departments within colleges that host their own application processes. Again, which just means during generally about a month period in time, these scholarship application um, applications open and it allows you to go in to review to submit applications um, should that be applicable to you. Um, so this will be available for everybody to see beyond this, but it's a great way to keep track of that and to kind of keep in touch with your college office about when that will be available to you um, coming up within the next you know, couple months generally. Um, and the idea is, is that we hope to have these available so that areas can get scholarships awarded to you uh, before um, we leave for the fall quarter at the latest. Um, and then you know what you may be eligible for both this fall, the upcoming winter quarter and the spring quarter as most of those scholarship awards are um, divided equally amongst the terms. So you will actually be selected and awarded for this current school year for many of these scholarship processes. So exciting news, you may still have an opportunity to receive more um, uh, 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 scholarship funding throughout the year here. Um, what I also want to throw out there, which is really important, is, is to get a little deeper dive into um, utilizing Scholarship Connect and these processes, along with making FAFSA awareness something in within our Office of Financial Aid. Um, we generally host some sessions this year. Certainly, they're going to be virtual and not in person. We're sad about that, but we want to still make the information available to you all. Um, so we'll be hosting um, scholarship and FAFSA info sessions um, where you'll be able to log into Zoom and we'll do um, a little um, tidbit about information, again, regarding how you apply both for FAFSA and for scholarships, uh, maybe some tips from our financial fitness area on essay writing, things like that, um, and answer any questions you all might have. And it also gives you a chance um, for anybody who uh, attends, you may be able to enter to win a Barnes & Noble gift card. So um, just a little encouragement to get there and to learn more about ways to obtain funding throughout the year uh, and to make it through uh, this first year at DePaul. So more information to come on that. We will be posting that on our social media. We'll be sending out email communication invites. So um, keep your eyes peeled for that information so that if you wish to join at that time, um, as we're kind of in the midst of scholarship season and FAFSA awareness coming up for get this next year already, um, we will be managing that piece through that. Uh, what I also have up here, which is really important, I think um, Courtney has that on the ticker too, but the most important is our contact for myself and my team. Um, and myself and my team are listed here. Uh, I have the great fortune of having uh, three team members who work with um, a few of our 
um, undergraduate colleges. So we're partners with them uh, basically to ensure that we get this information out there to everybody, that we make applications available, um, that we assist them in setting up the scholarship uh, applications. But the most important piece here is to know our, our main box, which is that OFA scholarships at DePaul.edu. Um, at any time, um, y'all can feel free to email us there. Um, even though we may be uh, remote working right now, we are looking at that in regular business hours every day. And we do try to get a turnaround to you all within in about a day. Um, so uh, we invite anybody who has questions about any of these processes or about Scholarship Connect itself, um, you know, to find us and let us know what that question is. We are more than happy to help um, and get you all on your way. And that is about it for the quick overview. Uh, just wanted to let you all know where you get things and how you get a hold of us if you need um, any answers to information. But that's about it. Yeah. Well, and I think that's really helpful for students to know, especially one of the, the things that we've been talking a lot about throughout this series is reaching out when you need help. And I think particularly what we're talking about right now, we're not only talking about students' financial situation in the current moment, um, but because you know, college is expensive. There's loans, there's all Absolutely. of these things. So students that are listening, I, I would highly encourage you to reach out uh, and take advantage of this scholarship tool because you never know until you try, you know, and the the dashboard that's available through the scholarship tool can really be helpful uh, to help alleviate some of that financial burden. And we know, especially through this pandemic right now, it is taking a financial toll on all, on all people, but especially college students in a very different way. So this is a great resource for students to take advantage of. Um, so Amy, I know you've talked a little bit about um, the, the virtual or that you all are op operating from a virtual environment. Um, right. Are there any other ways that students should plan to connect with you or find information? I know you talked a little bit about it in the presentation, but just for the, for the sake of reiterating for our students, are there ways they can stay connected? Sure, absolutely. Um, we are um, under the umbrella of DePaul Central, so I'm always going to suggest, I know that there was another DePaul Central session, so hopefully people have heard about it, but DePaul Central um, is, is a connector to us outside. If you have a really urgent question, um, you always want to contact DePaul Central um, and, and they can find us through that. Um, we, are, we are happy to answer whatever we can through that. Um, again, we, in general, for our team, um, we, we get, we get to the answers in that OFA scholarships box pretty quickly. So if there's anything you might need, I can encourage you to, you know, reach out to us through there. Um, we do have information about our scholarships and about um, Scholarship Connect on our website. So DePaul.edu, um, you know, you can just navigate through and find scholarships. It's financial aid and scholarships, which eventually leads you there, um, which gives you some information about um, and links to that you've been given here as well. But um, I, you know, it's, you're right, Courtney, it's, it's really important to never hesitate to ask a question in these cases. I think more often than not in the time I've been doing this for 20 years, um, it's, it's always encouraged, especially if you're confused about something which is more than understandable. It's your first time around through all of this. Um, finances can be overwhelming. Um, even searching through this tool and seeing that there's so many applications and, and ways to search. Um, you know, we, we try really hard to have keyword stuff in there. Again, the system can actually read you as the type of student that you are and make recommendations depend, you know, based on who you are, staying on top of the information that we're sending out. Um, I know that information about, you know, where we're communicating to you on email has, has gone out to you all and just the reminder that we will continue to send you you know, through social media, through email communications, um, all of the information about opportunities to learn more about this, but never hesitate to reach out to DePaul Central um, as a connection to our team as we're, we're technically a part of that. Um, and we are happy to help and answer any questions. And, and I truly mean it when I say that no question is too silly to ask, um, especially in your first time around. It's all about getting to know the process, getting to know DePaul itself and we are always happy to help students navigate that piece. Um, as you can see, we've been doing it for several years now and um, it's such an exciting time of the year for you. We wanna help make this as exciting as possible in every way we can, especially this fall um, with, with an extra set of challenges for everybody. We're, we're happy to be here to help and navigate you through it. Find us. 
Yeah. Well, and for our new, our students who are new to DePaul and particularly those who just graduated from high school, you know, there is a shift that is happening now going, going from high school to college. And you, you, you may have been in a situation where your parents or guardians were the leads of, of conversations in the past. And I think that's one of the biggest shifts in going into college now, you know, like, we as college administrators, we want to talk to you. We want to help you. Uh, and Amy, I'd be curious to hear if if you do have um, conversations with parents or what that relationship looks like. But for our students, you know, like Amy said, there the. The, she said, there's no stupid question. What I say, the only stupid question is the one that goes unasked. So mm -hmm. ask those questions, participate in those conversations because uh, you'll find that they're they're really helpful. Um, but yeah, Absolutely. Amy, I'm curious maybe if you can, can talk a little bit about, do you answer questions on behalf of parents or with yeah. have those conversations with parents or do you really steer them for conversations with students? No, that's a great question. Um, and I would say in general, because we're governed by a really important piece here, which is called FERPA, and just because I, I think we would agree that as an institution, it's important for us to prepare you for all aspects of life. Um, this, is, this is your educational career and you're right, Courtney, this is a big step in kind of moving into your young adulthood where you begin to make decisions that you maybe haven't in the past for yourself about your education, um, finances being involved in that. And while we don't expect that you're fully managing your finances, it's certainly not the case. You put your parents on the FAFSA in most cases. Um, we do ask that you always be a part of the conversation. Again, we are regulated by FERPA, and what that means is it's kind of like any other privacy act, um, you know, similar to what you might find in, in you know, hospitals and in your doctor, if you guys recognize that, is, is that um, we can't really be talking to your parents about anything specific about your particular, um, you know, your particular account, you know, it's certainly particular pieces of that. Um, they absolutely can be involved in the situation with your consent and there's ways to, and I think Paul Central probably went over this, where you can give kind of delegated access to your parents so you can consent to then getting that information. But I would say this as a general rule and having gone through it myself several years ago, um, it's really important that even if you give your parents consent to information that they may need for you guys to do this, the, the, the part of it that's important is that you do it together, that you understand together. So while I may have parents who email me something, when I'm responding, I may be able to give them a general answer, but I always incorporate the student back into the conversation if they are not in there already. And it's not only important to obviously have us follow federal regulations in terms of privacy information, but almost more important for me as a professional to make sure that we are giving you the tools you need to understand you know, what it means to help finance your education, what your stake is in it, um, and to understand the steps along the way as best you can. We, we do everything we can to not make it overwhelming um, and to talk through it at the pace that you want to talk through it um, and answer questions at the pace you're willing to answer it. But it's very important that everybody understands that the student is really required to be a part of the conversation, whatever that case may be. And that's just to serve to benefit you all to understand, you know, how this all works um, and how you're going to get through it, you know, and, and I think that's a really important piece. So thanks for asking that, Courtney. Yeah. And Amy, we actually also have a question from one of our viewers. It seems like it's uh, particularly surrounding international students. So is there a particular criteria for foreign or international students to be eligible for scholarships? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, this comes up a lot, and it's important to note that um, if there is a need component um, which requires a FAFSA to be on file because that is the measure of need, then unfortunately um, international students can't be eligible for those um, as they're in general, uh, unless you're, you're a, a, a filer, international students are not considered this, but there are um, particular statuses that are can be FAFSA filers who are not citizens. But in general, if you are not a citizen and, and listed as an international student, you are only able to apply for certainly external scholarships and external or internal scholarships that do not have a need component. So there are scholarships out there that do not have a need component. And what that means is it's called merit-based. So it means um, all that, that the criteria is for that particular scholarship is a merit component. So maybe an involvement in something, your GPA, your particular program, um, you may have to answer a question about something, 
But if need is not listed in the description as a component, um, you could be eligible for those scholarships. If need is listed, which we try to differentiate those by putting that in the description of scholarships, which is, this is another piece, I highly encourage everybody to read descriptions of scholarships. We try not to make them incredibly long so you can skim through them, but it helps you not you know, waste time applying for something that maybe isn't applicable to you. Um, and to flip that helps you find, um, you know, those key words helps you find ones that would be applicable to you. So the, the, the long and short answer of that is that there are scholarships out there. Um, there's not as many as there are that have a need-based component, but there are scholarships out there that international or foreign students could be eligible for based on the fact that they are merit only. Yeah, great. That's very helpful to know. Thanks for sharing that. So as we head towards the tail end of our interview, if there's any other questions from our viewers, feel free to post them in the comments and we can ask Amy live here. Or if you're watching the recorded session again, you can follow up with that email that's scrolling across the bottom. But Amy, just curious if you have any advice for our new to DePaul students, either whether they're a first year student or a new transfer student, um, either as it pertains to obtaining scholarships or just generally as a, as a college student here at DePaul. Yeah, absolutely. It's fun because I, I was able to be that at one point, and I know that life has changed a lot since that time, but I do think that DePaul offers so many great things. I mean, the fact that we're in a session like this now that um, Courtney and her area is making possible for you all is something I would say, take advantage of everything you can in terms of getting to know DePaul in getting to know you know, what college life is going to be like. And again, you know, I, I have to say that with a grain of salt because I know we're all going through something a little different, but how amazing that we're able to still get this information to you, um, hopefully, you know, in a really straightforward manner in a way where you can take advantage of the resources DePaul has. Um, I will promise everybody in the time I've been here, which is the reason why they still hang on to me, is that everybody at DePaul um, is here for you and here to help you get the answers to things to make this an incredible experience for you at DePaul. Um, we are truly committed to that. So most importantly, take advantage of all of these resources, you know, jump on here, worst case scenario, find and ask questions to anybody who's available to ask questions, we're happy to answer. And I would just say, have fun. Um, you have a great backdrop in which to learn, not only academically, but to learn about life and all the things that you're going to need to. And that kind of goes along with me encouraging everybody to be a part of the processes with your parents as you learn this. Because um, I promise you it'll be important information um, that will prepare you for life beyond DePaul. I know it seems far away now, but every little thing you can get to help is something that's going to be something you can carry on. So just take it all in, enjoy it. Um, and let's hope we're back on campus soon so that you can really enjoy in person um, all the great things that DePaul has to offer and get the real feel of the energy of our, our amazing DePaul environment and community. Yeah. Well, and one of the things we've been talking about through all of these interviews is, while yes, we're in a virtual environment right now, this is your chance to create your foundation. So create your foundation, join those organizations, head to Zoom events, start making those relationships. And part of your experience is also securing your, your financial future through scholarships. Absolutely. So take the time right now before classes ramp up too much and you have midterms or you're into finals, take the time to explore the opportunities available to you because it really will benefit you in the long run here. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Amy, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Really appreciate you being here and, and telling our students a little bit of, more about the scholarship tool. Uh, for our student viewers, if you didn't have the opportunity to check in on the front end of the interview, uh, you can still check in by scanning the QR code pictured here or by clicking the link that's uh, available in the chat feature. Uh, this uh, Get to Know DePaul is part of our Welcome Week offering. So between August 26th and September 11th, we have over 165 offerings available to students. So you can see the full calendar of events by visiting welcomeweek.depaul.edu. We'll be back with our next Get to Know DePaul session at four o'clock featuring our colleagues in financial fitness. So again, you'll be able to catch those sessions live from the Student Involvement or Res Ed Facebook pages. So uh, in the interim, we've also got a couple of evening activities planned for you that we want to make sure are on your radar. 
The first is our paint and palette. So uh, this is a unique opportunity because you actually can participate in the event one of three ways. Uh, first, if you're a student in quarantine, you have the option to request a kit uh, to be delivered to your room uh, by completing the, the form for that specific kit request. Uh, if you are a student who is uh, doing classes remotely, you can, sorry, I'm about to sneeze. Uh, if you're a student <laughs> who's taking classes remotely, you can request a kit online to have it delivered to you. Or if you happen to be in the Lincoln Park area, you can stop by Student Involvement today, Tuesday, from 1 to 5 p.m. to pick up your kit as well. So we'll be here handing out kits uh, for that event this evening. Then tomorrow night, we're having a video DJ dance party with the throwback time machine called What the Welcome Week Remix. So you'll be able to experience that live and request songs and connect with other students from around the country uh, in this virtual event as well. Um, but again, just one final plug to get checked in. Uh, but in the inter interim, if there's anything else that you need from us, from uh, the uh, the scholarship office from student involvement, feel free to let us know, but we will see you later today for our 4 p.m. session. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks, everyone.